SAPC2 has a documentary coming up called Language of My Soul on the 29th of September. Language of My Soul is a celebration of an African elder who rediscovered her will to live when she decided to revive a language she was once ashamed of. Now this documentary contrasts an era when the San were denied their humanity and a period when they were finally free to speak their language. Joining us now is Gregory Mulale, the director of the documentary. Greg, a very good morning. Thanks for joining us. Welcome. Morning, morning, Simpiwe, and a good morning to the viewers at well, at home as well. And thank you for having us. Well, it's an absolute pleasure. This is uh, an awe-inspiring story. So, what drew you to it? Hmm. So, um, I've always been passionate about African stories, African yeah. history, and one thing that I really want to do is rediscover that buried uh, information about our lives, our ways of living mm -hmm. before mm -hmm. colonization. So hearing that Oma Katrina is the last speaker of a language that is 25,000 years old was something that grabbed me. But more than that, hearing that without the ability to, to read and write, she started a school, participated in writing the first book in New, mm. a dictionary as well. I was like, this is a storied life. This story needs to be committed to film because it shows us as Africans that we have an immense heritage that we can celebrate, that you can draw from and use that knowledge to, you know, address our pressing concerns. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And as you said that uh, you are uncovering some of the heritage that's been, quote unquote, buried over the years. Um, I would imagine you, you did some intensive research, you know, into understanding the history and the cultural significance of the San language. So what kind of research did you uh, go into and what did you find from that research? Wow, it's, 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 it's immense. Uh, where can I start? You know, one thing that's special, especially about the Ngu language, the Ngu language, it only has Oma Katrina, who's the last speaker. Mm -hmm. And over and above that, the Ngu language is so complex and rich, like it's three times the size of the English language. English has 45 unique sounds, Ngu has 140 or so. Wow. And that complexity is what allows Ngu to store this wealth of environmental knowledge, uh, scientific knowledge, biocultural heritage that we can't access if we don't know the language. Right, right. So if we lose it, humanity, not just us South Africans or Africans, humanity is losing a wealth of heritage. Mm. So it's one of the things that I, I discovered, but also that languages like Stosa or the cliques of Stosa and other languages come from there, like the word of King Ikriha, Ikriha, sorry, mm. it's directly from Singo. It really? also means traditional healer. Really? Mm. And then Setswana, like K in Setswana would be K in Ngu, like we would call the uh -huh. wild berries the Kekwa, in Ngu will be Kekwa. But even in Angola, they have the Hadzebe who really are from this uh, language or this sun people. So it's the documentary reveals a lot. It's a story that is special on Heritage Month. Yeah. Us as uh, Africans, we can draw a lot from it and something that really can help us address challenges of today. Mm -hmm. You know, if mm -hmm. you don't know yourself, where you come from, you don't have a history to borrow from to address your present or to build your future. Mm -hmm. And a story like this really helps us in advancing the African cause. And having said that, how do you mm -hmm. think language revitalization uh, contributes, you know, to the preservation of our own cultural identity? Good question. Um, I think if we look at culture or cultural products, they are really a mirror or maybe a soul or a mind of, of, of a nation. Yeah. And without language, you don't have access to that culture. It's a vessel of, yeah, if you talk heritage, you think buildings, what we wear, artifacts, but the, the intangibles are stored in language. Yeah. Our values are everything. And we can't access them without language. Mm. So language is so important and today, something I'm guilty of also, we take our kids to these English speaking schools and my son won't know Sitswana much like I do because yes. the language is dying. It might not be like the son who were forced to stop speaking their language because of the persecutions of colonization and imperialism, but as we are decidedly not speaking it, but because somehow we are believing that to function in a commercial, in a capitalistic or rather modern society, you need to be well versed in other languages. So in answering your question briefly, language is critical. Without mm. it, you become a shell of yourself. Sure. Mm. When you say uh, the language or rather the indigenous language is dying, uh, what do you think contributes uh, to uh, the indigenous languages being phased out gradually? 
And who is to blame for that? We are to blame. We are the speakers of it. If you look at uh, a language which is 100% South Africans like Africans, yeah. the African speakers are defending it. And what I found out from this documentary is that even the people we call colored, and many of them are the sun descendants, we keep saying, no, maybe Africans should be in our schools. They see it as their language, since there are other mm. sun or new languages have been destroyed. They see it as their language, they yes. are preserved. It. So you have books in, uh, in Africans, you have African speakers defending their languages, but when it comes to us, Setswana, closer speaking, uh, people at other African languages in under G, we do not, we do not do the same advancing of our own languages. But luckily we have organizations such as Pukulit Children's Literature Foundation, who are also our co-producers, who really went at length to preserve these languages, to record them in books and have them be given to our children. The first book in Mu that Uma Katrina did was in collaboration with Puku Children's Literature Foundation. Mm. Mm. And I see this documentary uh, contrasts past oppression and present day freedom. So mm. what is it that you're hoping viewers will take away from, the, from watching this documentary? And uh, how are you hoping that it will promote uh, diversity in terms of languages in our cultural identity? Yeah, man. So in terms of uh, the, the enduring consequences of imperialism of the past is that it's probably one of the few documentaries where we get to hear Oma Katrina, her community, the sun, speaking for themselves. Yeah. Because more often they're not on documentaries. They are spoken for by an expert or a voiceover or me, the director, would be on some, I'm going in, mm -hmm. entering mm -hmm. this community. Yeah. But here, they're speaking about their plight themselves. Okay. And they are expressing their own disappointments about democracy, you know, mm -hmm. what they're hoping to get, what they didn't get and that more often than not, they would say it's not just uh, the Brits or the African who oppressed them, even us, Botswana, we did that. Mm -hmm. And such information is kept. So this documentary is really trying to put forth what Uma Katrina and her people have to say. Okay. What do they think about our present topical issues? All the right. land question, identity, and other issues. All right, Gregory, lovely yeah, chatting to you. Thank you so much for joining us. Eh? Thank you so much. Great stuff. Lovely. Well, we just spoke to Gregory Mulale, the director of the documentary Language of My Soul that's premiering on SAPC2 on the 29th of September.